have taken an incredible liking to watching those videos where people judge books based on basically anything and I really like the ones where people judge books based on their opening lines. I've watched about seven in the last like four days. They're great. I highly recommend. I specifically watch a lot of the Jack Edwards ones. He's watched, he's made like five, three, I don't know. But yeah, I really like them and I want to make my own and so I have some books that I want to read and that I took out from the library because that's where I mainly get my books. Um, and I wanted to see which ones I want to rank and perhaps that will help me realise which ones I actually want to read first. So yeah, I'm gonna put them, I think you can see them here, but I'm gonna put them like here. I don't know if you can see them, but if I put them here, but I'm gonna put them back here as I rank them. So the first one I have is Yogyazi's, Yogyazi's? I should know how to say this, I think, because I literally did an entire essay, my last essay that I ever wrote for uni was on Homegoing by Yagyazi, so I probably should know how to say her name, but I don't. Uh, this one had a lot of hype because it was like shortlisted for the Women's Book, no, not Women's Booker Prize, obviously not, Women's Prize for Fiction in like 2021. So there was a lot of buzz about this like two, like last year, because it happens the year after, doesn't it? But yeah, Transcendent Kingdom. I am really excited to read this. And so the first line is, whenever I think of my mother, I picture a queen size bed with her lying in it, a practiced stillness filling the room. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I like that one that much. It does give you an interesting picture to think about. Um, I know this is about like relationships between her mother and her. Um, is it? Yes, it is. Um, it's an interesting, I don't know if I like it that much, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it there because it's the only one we've got. So it's first and last at the same time. This one is Breathe by Joyce Carol Oates. And I like seeing her troll people on Twitter. So that's quite an interesting thing and probably wipe this up. Also, she was the one who wrote the book that the new Marilyn Monroe film on Netflix is based on. So yeah, apparently the book is quite good, but the film is very bad. So I don't know how much I trust reading this book, but we'll see. We'll see how we judge it from the first line. Part one, the vigil. Oh, okay. A hand is gripping yours. Hmm. Okay, it's five lines long, five letters long. So a hand is gripping yours. Okay, the second line is warm, dry hand gripping your slippery, humid hand. Uh, I mean, it's okay, it gives us something to think about, and it's quite short, so I guess like if you read the whole first page you'd be a bit more like intrigued, but considering that's it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not as good as the one about the mother, but you know, it's not, it's not the worst it could be. And then we have How To Be Both by Ali Smith. I feel like of all of the really, really simple covers, I really like Ali Smith's like whole vibe, like all of her books are published with this like really simplistic cover and I feel like she has that kind of underlock especially since like I guess she's been doing it for the longest she's one of those like contemporary writers who's been like famous for ages for having this like really simplistic publication style if no one is at the front interesting okay okay and permissions at the front okay one first line is consider this moral conundrum for a moment George's mother says to George who's sitting in the front passenger seat these all kind of suck. <laughs> I mean, I guess a lot of George in this. Um, it's not bad. It's not great. I don't know if I prefer it to the hand one though, because the hand one kind of sucks too. Hmm. I'm not sure. I like, okay, this one's a little bit more confusing, so perhaps I like that more than the one about the hand, but okay. The next one is Second Place by Rachel Kusk, 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 I don't actually know. I actually didn't want to read this one first. I wanted to read Outline by Rachel Kusk first, but that wasn't the case because my library only had this one. Actually, it had a couple others, but the others were like in that series where it's like Outline, Transit, whatever the other ones are. And I didn't want to read like the third book before I read the first book. So yeah, this one probably, we'll see how it goes. I like the premise of this one though. So first line of this book. Let's see if it gives me some confidence. 
I once told you, Jeffers, about the time I met the devil on a train leaving Paris and about how after that meeting the evil that usually lies undisturbed beneath the surface of things rose up and disgorged itself over every part of life. I feel like some parts of that sentence needed a comma, but um, this is definitely the best so far. And since I kind of know what the plot is because I've read the blurb, this is very much the most intriguing one. I told you once, Jeffers, about the time that I met the devil on a train leaving Paris and about how after that meeting, meeting the evil that usually lies undisturbed beneath the surface of things rose up and disgorged itself over every part of life. Rose up and disgorged itself is great. I really like that just combination. Disgorged is an incredible verb, especially in your first line. Met the devil on a train leaving Paris. Mm, I like it. I once told you, Jeffers. Mm. Jeffers is also a stupid ass name. I like that. I like that in a book. Yeah, you're going first. You, you've you've really met the cut. Made the cut. You've really made the cut. <laughs> okay, the next one is A Bright Ray of Darkness by Ethan Hawke. I'm a big Ethan Hawke fan. Um, I love a man who is in films, who love films. I feel like there's a lack of those, which is oxymoronic, I guess. But this is a book, so he might disappoint me. We'll see what his first line is saying. And the first line of his book is dedicated to Jack. Who's Jack? Okay, the prologue. The prologue is probably the first sentence. So it's not the first chapter, right? First sentence. So the chapter is called So Shaken We Are. When you finish a movie, they always forget to call you a car. Right. <laughs> um, I guess that's like interesting because I assume this happened to Mr. Mr. Hawk. I know this character is like also an actor because you know actors like talking about themselves. Um, that's quite interesting. I don't know. I also really like films, so perhaps I find this a bit more interesting than maybe most people would. When you finish a movie, they always forget to call you a car. The second line also kind of really gives you a good insight. I think. When you are starting a movie, everything runs perfectly. Town cars, hotel rooms, per diem. But once the film ends, they couldn't give a shit. I... It's not bad. It's not great. Because the first line is, you know, it's not the whole thing. It's just when you finish a movie, they always forget to call you a car. Hmm. Interesting. I like it. It's kind of gripping, especially for this kind of story. And that's an interesting thing to know. Nice picture of Ethan at the back. I don't know if I prefer it to Transcendent Kingdom yet it's definitely better than how to be both but i don't know if i prefer it to the one about her mum. um i think i kind of do i think i kind of do i think it's an interesting enough thing that i kind of prefer it to the one about her mum. okay the next one is notes of a crocodile by okay it's shu meow jin i don't know how to say the q is it shu is it with a j how do you say Kun's name from NCT? Uh, he's got a Q in his last name, doesn't he? I don't, I don't know. Oh my god. Anyway, but yeah, this is actually. I think it's short stories, but they're all like interlinked, like actually, like linearly. So I don't mind putting this in here because they are at least linked. They're not all different stories. So, Adventure of the Crocodile, Notebook One. First line's the date, but we're gonna we're gonna step past that. Picked up my college diploma at the service window at the registrar's office. Um, picked up my college diploma at the service window of the registrar's office. Straight to the point. Um, I don't care. I don't. The, the second line is, it was so big, I had to carry it with both hands. Still, you know, like, I guess that gives a bit more information, but I don't know if I care about the college diploma at the service window of the registrar's office. Is it worse? Ugh, what's this one again? Oh my god, I totally forgot. What's, what's this one? Okay, that one is about the hands. What's this one again? Just refresh quickly. Oh yeah, consider this moral conundrum for a moment, George's mother says to George, who's sitting in the front passenger seat. Um, okay, it's not as good as this one, actually. I think I'm gonna put it here, underneath. So it's second to the bottom. Oh my God, no. Penultimate, you might say. Okay, okay. We've got two more. The next book is um, Middle England by Jonathan Coe. I don't know why I picked this up. I think there was like a YouTuber that I watched that said this was really good and The Guardian calls it a comedy for our times. 
But um, I'm the Guardian, I'll be the judge of that. So the first page is, okay, <laughs> again with these really short first lines. The funeral was over, that's it. The second bit is, not the second bit, the second line is, the reception was starting to fizzle out. Oh, that's just it, okay. Benjamin decided it was time to go. The funeral was over, the reception was starting to fizzle out, Benjamin decided it was time to go. Mm. It's not bad. It's not great. It's not... I guess... I don't know. Is it a good start? The funeral is over. I guess it like tells you something and it's like, whose funeral is it? You know, you're wondering. You know? Why is Benjamin leaving? I don't know if I prefer it to the one about the mum, but I think it might be better than George. I'm gonna put it there. It's not that intriguing to be fair, but you know, th these last three are a bit shit. So at least the funeral has something going for it. And the last one is Eileen by Otessa Mushbag, who is great. And to be fair, I say that with only having read one of her books. I actually read my year of rest and relaxation, my year of rest and relaxation. Um, before the hype, but then even throughout all of the hype, I never read any of her other books because I don't know. I just like didn't massively like the book. I did like the book, but I didn't like the character, and I was like, I don't know if I want to put myself in that headspace where I'm sort of like biding my time reading the book because I'm like, it's good and it's good writing, but I'm like, I don't know if I want to be in that headspace right now. Also, this book is being made into a movie, or well, it's already been made, and it's got Anne Hathaway and. Thomasin Mackenzie in it and I'm really excited it was at Sundance I think yeah then they put it out at Sundance so it is coming out and I, I can't remember I think it's maybe Neon is distributing I don't know why I'm telling you all this but yeah Neon is distributing this movie which means it'll get a wide release um which is to be expected considering Otesha Moshberg is quite a big author and Anne Hathaway is a big actress but anyway enough about the film it just just the fact that there's film just kind of makes me more interested in reading it. So anyway, to judge the first line. I looked like a girl you'd expect to see on a city bus, reading some cloth bound book from the library about plants or geography, perhaps wearing a net over my light brown hair. Hmm. I like that more than some of these, but um, I don't know. Okay, I look like a city girl you'd expect to see on a city bus. Sorry, I look like a girl you'd expect to see on a city bus. Me, really. Reading some cloth bound book from the library, me, about plant geography, absolutely not. Wearing a net over my light brown hair. It's set in 1964, so wearing a net is not mental and normal. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I like the idea that she is somebody you would expect to be on a bus reading a book about plants. And that's an interesting kind of like introduction to a character, I think. Like, why? Like, what kind of, what kind of vibe is that? Like, are you wearing sweater vests? Like, what's going on? Mmm, I think I'm gonna put it here. So yeah, I'm gonna, that's my last ranking, I think. I'm gonna go with this. Yeah. Oh no, don't fall, please. Okay, yeah, this is my, my ranking, I think. I do like ranking them by their first lines. I think I'm really nosy and opinionated and like sharing my opinions. So yeah, some of these were like bad, not like bad, bad, but I'm sort of like, you know, if you're trying to hook someone, why aren't you trying a bit harder? Maybe it's like, if you've been writing for a while, you don't care as much, perhaps, I don't know. Like, but this is not her first book. This is definitely the most interesting one and it's not her first book. So like, what was going on? Let's read it again. I once told you, Jeffers, about the time I met the devil on a train leaving Paris and about how after the meeting, the evil that usually lies disturbed beneath the surface of things rose up and disgorged itself over every part of life. Definitely wins, definitely wins. But yeah, this was fun. And I'm definitely way more excited to read this than I was considering this wasn't even the book by this author that I wanted to read first. Definitely upping itself in my own ranks. And Ethan Hawke, you've always been good to me. You know, I am excited to read this one too. So we'll see how that goes. Hope you enjoyed watching me judge books. There's nothing really more fun than watching people judge books they really have no idea about with just the first line.